second half. Here comes Gooden. Gooden. Gooden score the two and one. Full drive inside. Stop. Hang on a pivot. Turn around. Jump shot is good. Jordan Battle with a nice spin move. Kicks it down low. Fardon. Big Maple with the finish. What's up, everybody? Uh, Straight Out of Whack podcast. As you can see, it is Tarleton week, and I have with me a special guest, Tarleton head coach, men's basketball, Billy Gillespie. Billy, thanks for coming on today, taking a few minutes of your time. I know that uh, you're busy. We're less than 60 days away from you know the college basketball season tipping off, so uh, thanks for coming on. Happy to be here. Thanks. So I, I want to ask you about your season last year. I mean, you, you played probably the toughest non-conference schedule in November. I know that you're – I think we've talked about this before. You play anybody, anytime, anywhere. I mean, has that just been kind of your coaching philosophy since you became a head coach? Not just at Tarleton, but wherever you've been. No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, we've never – we always respect everyone, fear nobody, but we don't run out there and, and yell it out and – and say, you know, I've seen some of these groups go out and say the words that you use. We don't go brag about that. We're not uh, we, we respect everyone, fear no one. But uh, whatever we think is the best for our program and our particular team at that time is how we try to schedule. So, like, uh, there's been many years when when we probably have the easiest schedule in the country in the preseason. Uh, last year, I, I, I would think not too many teams had a more difficult one than us, but. I think that in each individual year, you have to take into consideration what your team and and uh, what your program needs at that moment. When you when you put and I don't like to talk about last year too much, but I have to ask you when you put together last year's schedule. I mean, at Stanford, uh, you played at Kansas, at Gonzaga, uh, Wichita State was there. I mean, and Michigan as well. Like you knew that you didn't have a lot of size per se last year. And then you went out and played all these teams with these giants. And like, when you look at that, what, what does that help you learn about your squad that they can go toe to toe with some of the, a lot of those teams? Well, first of all, our team, our league is very good and there's a lot of size in our league and there's, there's a lot of really good players in our league. And so the WAC doesn't get the consideration, even though it's gaining more consideration as we go forward. And so I think, uh, when you're, you're trying to put in a non-conference schedule, there's sometimes that you have no control over who you play and how it's going to help you in conference or whatever. Uh, but if you do have a choice in it, sometimes you want to think, well, they're, they're going to kind of be like this particular team in our conference. And, and so you try to do that as far as size, you know, uh, I think John Wooden said it a long time ago. You always try to recruit the best tall players that you can get. And, uh, but the key word there being best, and, and not tall. And so we, we try to, we try to get guys, uh, we would love to have the best tall players that we could get. Uh, but again, the, the uh, key word there being best. And if we can't get the absolute best players or can't develop them that are, that are with size, then, then you try to figure out how to play against those real big guys. And we've been able to do that so far. I want to ask you about your, you, you put, you know, you're still putting together the pieces for your non-conference schedule right now, but how does the whole WAC seating system for the WAC tournament, now that Tarleton's eligible this year, play into maybe a change in mindset, I guess, per se, and put together your non-conference schedule this year? Is that play into it at all? Well, I think it was, we already had a bunch of stuff done when they, they uh, decided how they were going to do the conference uh, seating for for the tournament and so I think it'll probably be more important next year as we learn how this system is going to work it's going to be interesting I don't think anyone's ever done it like that and so it'll be interesting to watch and, and see how it affects each and every team how do you I mean obviously you started at Stanford last year you get another Pac-12 school this year that you're starting at Arizona State I mean are you excited to go up against Bobby Hurley the the Sun Devils and so forth I mean that's a fun trip to the desert yeah, we're, we're excited about it. We have a great re- respect for coaching this program. And, you know, he I was a high school coach, and and uh, I kind of patterned a lot of things we did after the way Duke played at that time. They play differently now. Uh, but I loved watching Coach play, and his teams play with the same kind of fire and determination. And so uh, we'll be really excited to have the honor to play them on November 7th. You also have a couple mid-majors, UCF, Air Force. You go back to Wichita State. 
how important are those games? I know everybody, you know, talks about the power six games and stuff like that, but like maybe those 50, 50 games between mid majors, how important are those, especially for a Tarleton squad that I mean, you're still trying to put your footprint on the division one level, I guess you could say. Well, I think we announced pretty, pretty loudly last year that we were going to be a player in division one. As soon as we were able to, to get a complete roster, our guys played as well as they could. Uh, we were 14 and 17, but we were nine and nine in conference without arguably our best player for 14 of the 18 conference games. And I thought we really held our own. We dug ourselves a hole because of the schedule that we played as far as, as uh, record goes. But I thought that we had about as good a year as most people across the country, even though you wouldn't look at the final record and say that. And so, uh, you know, as, as we move forward, uh, those teams that we're playing, UCF is really great. And Wichita State's really good, great basketball place, hard home court to play on. Baylor, Arizona State, going to Air Force. Coach got a tremendous program. We got Weber State coming in here to our place. We got a Chicago State, who I thought did a fantastic job last year. They're coming in there, and so we're able. We were able to get some home games as well as road games. And as we continue to to get towards, uh, you know, get get through get through this period to where we're going to be a full fledged member of Division One. I. I mean, we're already playing that, but. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to we're trying to win a national championship here. I know you can laugh at us all you want, uh, but that's what we're trying to do. And I think that we've done we've made a lot of moves, especially in the scheduling part, uh, to be able to do that. We have tremendous resources here. It's an unbelievable location. It's great basketball tradition. There's so many things that are great about Tarleton. And we think that we can be a major player in the Division One basketball world. And so we're trying to make these moves as we move forward. Uh, to get through this four-year period, which we're almost done now. I'm glad you brought up that whole national championship. I, you know, I responded to a tweet today from Rob Doster that he was. He mentioned that you said that your your goal was winning a national championship at Tarleton. I was going to ask you about that, so I'm glad that you brought that up. So I didn't even have to ask. Yeah, but in in, in basketball, you can do it. I mean, especially we're going to be a big player in the NIL thing, and and uh, we've got a group that's doing fantastic things for our players already, and it's going to get better and better as we go and. And that's the world that we live in. And, and uh, there's a great deal of player movement. So I think that benefits us. You know, we're, we don't think we don't think it's a negative for us. We think it's positive because we think what we have to sell here. Tarleton's fantastic. So uh, winning a national championship is all about having players. And we think with the NIL, with the, the movement that's going to that's being allowed now, I think it's a big major, uh, a big major advantage for Tarleton State. You talk about the NIL, and then you mentioned resources just a minute ago. I mean, Tarleton is invested in its athletic department. It feels like not just its athletic department, the entire school. I mean, you see it on a daily basis, but can you maybe talk a little bit about that and just where they're trying to get the university to be, not just athletically but academically as well? Yeah, I mean, it's blowing up uh, like nothing I've ever seen before. I, I, I attended Southwest Texas State, which is now called – Texas State, and they had ten or twelve thousand students when I went there. They have about forty thousand, I think now. High thirties, forty, maybe even more than that. But but uh, I don't know if if they had, I don't know if they had the desire to be great in sports like we do here. And and uh, I've never seen anybody have that desire. That's no disrespect to any other school, but uh, our our president, our athletic director, it seems like the whole community they're they're used to winning. They just won the state football championship last year undefeated. They've won a number of them. They've had NFL quarterbacks here, I think three or four in the town of, of 25,000, which is amazing. They win and everything here at the school. The volleyball team's good, football team's good, baseball team's building. And, and uh, they, they, they build great buildings for us to play in. Uh, they have great housing for our players to be in. They have great resources uh, to take care of the players once they get here. And, and then along now with the NIL movement, uh, these these people here, these alumni and whatever, uh, these people are jumping on board to try to help our players and and not only get them, you know, you can't use it to get players there, but once they get there, then then to be able to retain these great players and I just think that the sky's the limit for us. You know, I think it's the fastest growing public school in Texas, I believe, or uh, in one of the top maybe six or seven in the country, and this place just continues to grow. It's bursting at the seams. 
Let's talk about your roster. You mentioned, you know, Shaq Daniel missed most of last year with that knee injury. I think it was right before conference play it came out that he had – I mean, what's it been like for you to watch him recover? Where's kind of he at right now? Or are you taking it easy? I know most coaches with a knee injury, they're like, how much do I push this guy? And you know your players best. They know their bodies best. Like, what, what have you seen from him and his – to get back on the floor. Well, actually, Shaq had a thumb injury, and and uh, he he was he he was a thumb injury, and he actually came back and played the last four games of conference, and and so he missed the first fourteen, but came back and played, and so he's one hundred percent healthy. He's ready to okay. go. This is this is fifth year, and and uh, you know he started out at Southern Miss, and then went came with us to Ranger, and then came with us to Tarleton. This will be his third year here, so I, I would think that he'll have his best year yet. But he it's is good to go. I apologize for that. I no, thought it was, no I don't know, I, no, it was a knee injury. So I think he had what Tony Romo got the other night. I believe that's what it is. I, I haven't heard them explain exactly. What, I mean, not Tony Romo, Dak Prescott. And, and uh, you know, I, I you know, uh, he was out about six or seven weeks, missed, missed 14 games. We clearly missed him. But in that time, you know, uh, one man's misfortune is another man's gain. And so, Noah McDavid, who was a freshman who wasn't playing much at that time, uh, he was kind of forced into action as well as a couple of other guys. And and uh, he really came along and played a lot of minutes and he got a lot of experience. And and I believe he's going to be a really good player in the WAC this year. And it'll probably go back to saying, OK, well, we made a positive out of Shaq's negative, you know, not being able to play. But we don't want Shaq to get hurt anymore. I tell you, he's, <laughs> he's very, very important to us in everything we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to talk about. Freddie Hicks, I mean, that guy plays almost every position on the floor for you at times. He's he, he's outsized quite a bit in the whack at times. Like, But his motor's always going, I feel like, and he hits a big shot here and there. He can score 25-plus on any given night. Like, what, what do you see out of this small forward that, like I said, plays multiple positions for you all over the floor every game? Yeah, he, he's – actually, Freddie's been out uh, all summer long, and, and hopefully he'll be returning soon. But but uh, he had a, a little little foot issue, but hopefully he'll be fine. And, and uh, you're exactly right. I mean, he's, he's tough as nails. He's a great teammate. He's versatile. He's willing to do whatever it takes for the team to do best. And he's basically played out of position his entire time here. Uh, we've had to play him at the four and sometimes at this back to the basket. And – and he's really a small forward, like you're saying, uh, you know, uh, so but he'll do whatever it takes uh, before. Like he he uh, injured himself in a pickup game right before we started this summer. And uh, we definitely need him and have to have him. Uh, but we're looking forward to his return. It should be soon. Uh, but he he'll be, in my opinion, as good as the whack is and as good as many players as they have in the league. I think he'll be one of the best. Shamir Boggs, one of the best defenders in the league. Super quick, but I feel like he's got some athleticism that we see in glimpses, but we don't see maybe enough. Do you, do you see that in practice with you with Shamir? He practices really hard. He he's a he's a guy that I mean I think you see a, a lot of athleticism all the time, and then you see an exceptional play, and but I don't think anybody can repeat the exceptional play twenty four hours a day or forty minutes in a game. I think those are just special athletes that are able to rise to an occasion, but you can't play at that level the entire time. I, I doubt if anyone plays harder than him, uh, especially he's been great on defense both years for us. He's got he's played a ton of minutes in his first two years. I think this year what everyone will see is, is he's really improved his offense. He's really worked hard to become a better shooter. I think he's a he's a good shooter. He's not great yet, but he's a good shooter. Uh, that that you really have to pay quite a bit of attention to now. I think he's a very very confident offensive player, and that's probably what he was lacking as a freshman and, and a sophomore last year. And so I think he'll have one of the better uh, better leagues uh, once we get to that point to turn into a leader. Uh, just a joy to be around every day. But going back to the defense, he he touches a ton of balls. He's got really long arms. He he knows how to play position defense. He can guard his own man. He can help. And, and uh, not everybody can guard their own man and keep him from, you know, driving. And he can do that, but he can also help. So uh, he's got to get uh, to be the best defender. He's got to be a better rebounder. But, again, I think as you go forward into his career, I think that's what's going to happen. I think he'll be one of the better players in the WAC, too. And, again, 
I know how many good players there are in this league, and I haven't seen all of them this particular year, but I know what this league is made of. And I, I think that, that he and Freddie and Shaq are, are three of the best guys in this league. Let's talk about the – I mean, you play small. You know, it's not like Tarleton in the last couple of years has been known for its size. But you, like you just mentioned, you have some of the best players in the WAC, very good guard line. How – I guess how nice is that luxury considering you know that the, the WAC is loaded with really good guards all around? You better have them or you're going to get destroyed. You know, it's <laughs> like – and again, you, you look at the top from the top of the league to the bottom, this league has drastically improved and it was already good, but it's drastically improved. And, and uh, I, th I think that's what determines how good a, t a league really is. And I think the, probably the numbers, I think we were ranked 14th or 15th last year by the numbers. I think our numbers will continue to go up higher uh, because of the depth of the conference. I think in the past, maybe there was a, a great deal of strength at the top got a little bit weaker at the bottom and, and uh, I don't see any weakness at the bottom anymore, I, I, you know, and, and we're going to try to stay out of the bottom, but, and that's not going to be easy to do. It'll be hard for any team, but I think that the, uh, all the teams are just continuing to rise up. I think the leagues at the top, the teams at the top are getting better. I think the teams in the middle are getting better. And I think the teams that have been historically at the bottom are getting better as well. So competitive games, you know, the travel's uh, difficult in this league. The really good coaches, really good home court advantages. And so it's a really good league. And it'll be really competitive this year, maybe more so than I've seen in a while. I like what you said about the depth. There's a lot of depth in this conference. And like you said, there, there's top to bottom teams have depth on their roster. I don't – and maybe you've seen this and you can respond to it. I don't know that we have the superstar power. The WAC has a superstar power it did last year with the – Eddie Allen, Fardell, Zamac, Tremel, you know, even to Montre Gibson, who was with you last year, like it's more, it's, he seems deeper. I feel like instead of having that maybe superstar. So we're going to find out who the superstars are, I guess this year. Yeah. Those guys usually evolve, you know, and it may be on your team, maybe on someone else's team, but you know, uh, two years ago, nobody thought that Fardell was as good as he was. He was coming as a transfer from Mercer, I believe in, and you didn't know how good he was going to be. And, and then all of a sudden, he just kept getting better and better and better. Teddy Allen was only in our league for one year, and he was a superstar coming in but with questions surrounding him, and, and that he played really great in our league. But there's other guys that have just continued to elevate their game. And, and when you have good players and you have a number of good players on each team, that's when – that's, you know, as things evolve, as new seasons start, as new teams – uh, get together and those kind of things, then then you find out uh, who the real good players are. And there will be some guys that really rise to the to the top. There's, it always happens uh, because they are good players in the first place. Maybe some guys being gone opens up an opportunity for them to be more of a force than they were before because they were taking a secondary role. Maybe they get to play the primary role now, and you see exactly how good they were then and how good they are now. One last question for you as I as we wrap this up. Is there any one place that you you've been to, you know, going for a game that you really like right now in the WAC? And is there one place that you're like, uh, it, it's okay, maybe not necessarily on the top of your list? Well, I, I don't want to go to any of them. No, I don't like any of them. <laughs> like going to any of them. I'd rather play all our games at home. But you know, I like the I like the competition. There's really good home court uh, home court venues in this league and. It's good travel. It's good cities. You know, it's good places. Uh, we get to go to Seattle this year. We didn't. We haven't done that in my two years here. And and uh, you know, some like uh, Utah Tech gets to come here. They haven't been here, and so it's it's a it's a unique league. You know, it's it's a it's it seems like a, a distance travel, but it doesn't seem like it's as taxing as in some other leagues that I was in before. You know, when we were in the WAG before at Tulsa, it seemed like the travel was impossible. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, maybe the cities, there were 16 teams in the WAC at that time and probably the best 16 teams I've ever seen in basketball in one league. But, uh, you know, I, I like going to all these places if you have to go to any of them, you know, but they're hard to, they're hard to go to. And it's uh, hard to, to try to take a team in there and win because the teams that are waiting you are very, very, very good. And so uh, how, again, going back to respect everyone, fear no one, we look forward to the competition. 
Let's text Tarleton men's basketball head coach, Billy Gillespie. Billy, appreciate the time today. I uh, will keep going with Tarleton week this week. Check out everything on WACCOOPSDigest.com and uh, enjoy the rest of your week, folks. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out of Whack podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Whack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Whack Hoops Digest for all your Whack Hoops news and information.